bareback, as you can see. She's riding bareback. Hi, like Clyde. You. It's a good horsey. <laughs> he wants to sniff the camera. Happy Bye -bye. trails. Happy trails. There she goes, making the loop. What do you think of horseback riding, Elaine? I love it. Mm. Oh, get him You want me to give him a carrot? Okay, hold on, we'll get a carrot. Slide, would you like a carrot? Come on, get the carrot, get the carrot, dude. Has he got a bit in his mouth? No. Oh, okay. He can't even eat it with a bit. Let you finish. Benny, look in your bath, in your duffel bag. It's in there. This way. This way. Come on. You got to turn with both reins, Michelle. Both reins. Okay. Put both reins together and pull them both over around. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Clyde. I don't have any more. What do you think about riding oh, horses? Yeah. How do you like riding horses? Fine. You think it's a fun thing? This, uh, this, this horse's name is Clyde. This horse's name is Clyde? Yeah. You think what? he's a pretty good horse to ride? He's the best horse to have to ride. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going with this carrot here. Now, the, the hard part is to make sure you've got him now because he doesn't want to leave if he thinks he can get more. Go, Clyde. So you got to kick him and make him go. And keep him moving so he won't go into the garage. Pictures of Uncle Bill and the old house and the leases. See around here was sure. constructed by my great uncle Bill, my dad's oh, wow. uncle, Uncle Bill Odin. It was the backyard. Fireplace. Kids were camping up here last night, so I'm doing camping stuff around. Smoking oven there. I don't know if it's clear in the video 
tape, but as you can see, the, you may be able to see that wall is leaning outward to the right. And up there, near the barbecue, that wall used to be in contact with the corner of the stone oven. As you can see, there's about a 8 or 10 inch gap there now. It's part of the concern that there's a big slide just below the house here. We're slowly creeping away. Give you a view of the countryside that you get from up here. Better view up here on top. Bill used to have a swing between these two trees and you go swinging out from the driveway clear out over the road. It was quite exciting. So much so that when my father moved up here he insisted that my Uncle Bill remove the swing. He felt it was a little too dangerous. The view that you get coming up the driveway there's Winston. Hi, Winston. Hi, Winston. This is Great Uncle Bill's log cabin. We're going to hear him give us some stories now. On the way they're leaving to go down, going back home, and before they left, they wanted to come by. And have, uh, have their great great uncle tell them of some of the tales of Trinity. One other thing about the time I swallowed a frog. Is she, is she picking us up? Oh, I'm sure she is. Got it. I think we lived up on the hill where, where Lisa does now. And uh, Justin and I lived there. And one Sunday afternoon, two friends of ours, Claude Gribble and his wife Billy, came up and and uh, I was, I'd been doing a little project out on that patio on the back side there where the fountain is. I guess I don't know whether it's there now or not. But there was a round water place there and the water ran down. And, uh, and when I was, well, before, when they came, I mixed, I mixed four drinks. I poured a little rum in a glass and a little, little Pepsi Cola and a little lemon, a wedge of lemon. You squeeze the lemon and drop it in the glass and mix a drink and call it Cuba Libre. So I made these drinks, and I gave the girls each theirs, and went out with a club carrier of mine, like, like uh, Jim is, and he had his. And while I was out there at the spring, around there, there was a pretty little green pole, just about the size of your fingernail, beautiful little green thing, clean and nice, in the same water we drank. And I wanted to show it to Elsie and, and Claude's wife, Millie. So uh, we Claude and I were talking. I had cut that sliding glass door and went in that bedroom. Back there. I put that in, I want short the clock. So we had more to say, and I just dropped the, I had the drink, and I just dropped the little frog down in my drink. <laughs> on an ice cube. Made it, made it nice. Yeah, I thought, well, I'm going in the house, I want to show him for the girls, and I want to keep him wet and nice and shiny, so I dropped him in there. It wasn't very big, and it was clean water. You put him on an ice cube, girl, so you wouldn't feel he was drowning. What'd you say? You, you put him on an ice cube. He could swim. He was a frog. He didn't need any yeah. ice cubes. To swim. <laughs> but anyway, we went back in the house after a few minutes, and and I uh, went in and sat on the hearth there. And uh, Claude and Elsie and the girls were here, and Claude and I were there. I'm sitting on the hearth, and I thought, well, I better try my drink. And I tipped it up. I thought well, I just swallowed a little bit of lemon there. <laughs> But I looked and the lemon was still in lemon was still in the glass and I realized I felt a little something hanging in the back of my throat and I had swallowed the frog. I didn't know it. And so I gulped. I didn't want him hanging back there. That little thing hangs down the back of his throat. And he, he was throbbing. I kept trying to get him down and he finally went down. I 
Then what else to do? They went down and grinned on like a possum. And there he was, and I said to Claude, what do I do, Claude? And he said, well, all I know for you to do is swallow a lily pad. <laughs> but uh, that was the last of the... That was the last. I love that tale. It's true. Elsie will vouch for that. But anyway, I feel this little twitch here in my... Pickles here on my side. I, uh, I guess he's got, still down there. <laughs> I hear the telephone. Excuse me. Where else is he going? She hears the phone ring. Uh, there's a time. You haven't got time for this, Mark. You, you go ahead. Tell another one. There was a time I, I made my sky ride up on the hill. It's not the swing that your dad tells about, but you know up where the house is and down by the garden where that we used to be, I call it the halfway house, down where the stables are, that redwood tree, the big tree, nice tree. Wasn't that the halfway house? Isn't that that one that, oh, that's the one that's That's where, where the, the horses are. Where the stables are now. That's the tap room. Yeah. The what? The tap room, where they got the tap room for the horses. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, there was a, the redwood tree wasn't that big then. It was more like that tree then. And so I thought, if I got, had this long table I found on the river, stoop table, and I thought, I'll make a sky ride, so it's something I can, I can take off up here, looking down, and swoop down, and I'll coast up to that tree, and then coast back, and that'll be a lot of fun. So uh, I worked all day getting it all rigged up, I had to climb up and tune it all up good. And then tried to get Elsie to take the first ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, then I thought, well, I coast up that way, and then I slide back. And but I thought, well, how, how am I going to get down? I'm going to be 20 feet off the ground. And so I, that took, I had to make me a rope ladder. Was well, it wasn't rope made out of a belt, and I put bolts here so I could climb down after I went up the coast. Back. So I got Elsie out there to see him. I'm going to, I'm going to try my sky ride. Get out here, Elsie. And I got up on the stump. To sit down, I made it out of some fire hose. I was going to sit on this, and I had this pulley on the cable. Like a, you know, like a tramway. So I got Elsie out there. I got up on this stump and I got in there and away I went. Shoo, and the dump run, my ladder was sticking up behind and the trees coming up. I thought, well, I've been knocking brains out through sure, shoot. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I went faster, much faster. Went, Shoo, and the trees coming up. I thought, well, I'm going to get smashed like a fly in a fly in a fly smoker. But you know, the Lord was looking after me because I coasted the hat just the way planted. I coasted right up to that tree. I could have kissed the tree and then it coasted back. And I'm pretty well shaken up by now. But, and then I, I climbed down, and that was the end. I took it down. That, that was the only way I was out of that You didn't You didn't think about trying it with a sandbag or something first, huh? Oh, no, no, no. no. I had that too. Don't figure that out. Right. I got a million of them. Someday I'll tell you about the time that. I went to Alaska with a friend of mine, and we ran in. We, we towed a boat to 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 uh, Prince Rupert and put it in the salt water. We're going to Alaska. Ran out of gas in the middle of in the middle of that Gulf of Alaska. Ran out of gas. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sitting out there dead in the water. It was Fourth of July, 1969. Oh, I could see the gas gauge going down. Ran out of gas. Saw a fishing boat. He finally came over and called the coast. He had radio. I asked Clackett before he went. I said, you got radio? Oh, yeah, I've been going to radio school. I've got radio. I said, well, I hope so, because we might need it. We got up there. I had this emergency that turned out to be CB. Said, this is bad radio. This fishing boat was way over on the horizon. He finally Oh, I said to Clarky, I said, uh, after we sat there for a while, and, uh, I said, didn't we, didn't we put a life raft on here when, uh, when we were packing the stuff? And he said, yeah. I said, well, where is it? Anyway, I got this yellow life raft. It was a GP Japanese baby. I got up on top as high as I could get, and I'm waving this life raft. Best I could. They're kind of heavy. I'm waving this life raft. Clarky's seasick. <laughs> Sick down by me. Down below. But, uh, Anyway, then this boat way over there slowly began to turn, and he came over. His name was John James. I never forget his name. 
Your old uncle got a phenomenal memory for names. But uh, he came over and with good radio, he called the Coast Guard. Did they give you some fuel? They have to tow you. Told us. Is that right? Came, <clears throat> we went in here. They came in a big ocean going tug. Twin screws. First thing they did was come up close and told us to leave the, the wheel loose and, just, uh, and give us a, uh, a, a, a sign a paper that uh, absolving them from any suits or anything. They said, just let the thing hang loose. And away we went. Well, we, they, they had the head would catch down. And we got up there clerking that thinking, how much is this going to cost us? You know? yeah. They took us to the Standard Oil dock and, and we said, well, uh, what do we owe you? They said, not a dime. That's our job. We're part um. of the U.S. Coast Guard. You don't owe us a dime. We thought better than that. <laughs> that's a long story. I'll tell you that. Oh, that's well, thank great. Thank you much, Uncle Bill. We'll be up in the fall or sometime. And Don't I'll bring, me for anything. I'll bring my son up here and yeah, have show him a little thing about fishing. Well, He's getting old enough bring now. These that he girls, can... I suppose they've got their activities. Yeah, well, they like to fish too, as a matter of fact. Well, Don't you guys? I bring Sarah. Who knows if the weather's right? Sure. Always did, always will. Oh, I think so. uh, yeah. <laughs> Pounds? I don't know how much it weighs. How much? 63 pounds. Well, I wasn't too far off. How many pounds off was I? Not very far. My goodness. Stacy, how, how, Stacy, uh, uh, she, she must be every bit as tall as, uh, what's your name? I can't.